Today we're going to look at the most dangerous 1-1 creatures in Magic the Gathering. They might be small, but they, you better believe it, they pack a big punch. Alright, we're going to start off with Baleful Strix. Actually, one of my favorite creatures in the game. It's black, it's blue, it's an artifact, and it's a creature. It's so simple, it's just a 1-1, but it has flying and death touch. So you touch it just once, your creature is dead. Uh, but what, here's the deal. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. That's value, so you can trade with any creature and you are advantaged. This was like such a staple in Legacy for like, I don't know, almost an eternity until it got replaced by just strictly better creatures, frankly. Uh, which is, that's just power creep. You know, drawing a card and trading with another creature, that's old school news, but I still love the Baleful Strix. All right. Arethusa with the Sage Scorpion. Quite literally. It is a 1 1. It is also a Death Touch creature. Strictly. Well, I can't say it's strictly worse than uh, Baleful Strix. It's for one mana. And for one mana. Oh, does it. Does, no, it doesn't have to be C, one CMC. It's just a 1 1 creature. The thing can be 10 mana and a 1 1 creature. I don't care. Anyway, you know, you're, you're all a reliable one mana, one one death toucher. Oh, you got a 10 10 creature in front of me? Alright, come, come at, come at me, bro. Come at me. Come at me. No, you're not gonna come at me. The Red Scout with Glistener Elf. Ooh. Almost forgot about this guy. The Glistener Elf, the one green, one one. But with the one special ability, in fact, because you just get hit. Your life total is no longer 20, or 40, it's now 10, because if you take 10 poison damage, you lose the game. Yeah, I know. How many of you out there want there to be, like, the rule changed that Infect now has to deal, like, 20 or more damage or some nonsense like this? It's quite ridiculous. Uh, there's a lot of competitive players, they feel somewhat the same way. You get cheesed out for 10, 10 damage, oh, it, it's a feel-bad moment. You tap out, pump spell, pump spell, you're dead. The Glistener Elf is quite the classic. I just mentioned Baleful Strix. I just mentioned Baleful Strix. All right. Uh, Memnut. Okay, it's Memnut. I know. I know what you're doing. Ew, you just a little too quick. Yeah, Memnut gonna have a Memnut uh, all over your life total. That's for sure. All right, we got zero mana, one, one. Arguably, one of the most broken cards, actually, as a one, one. This guy usually finds his way in, like, decks that are usually getting cards banned, but not really Memnite gets banned. It has seen play in all sorts of affinity-style decks. It even saw play in Hammer Time in Modern for quite a long time. Um, yeah, I mean, it costs nothing, and you have a creature that can attack for damage next turn. So, no, the creature itself isn't going to kill you. It's always going to be, like, Cranial Plating, Nettle Cyst, Arcbound Ravager that all get sacrificed to an Ink Moth Nexus or something. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Memnite. Super, super dangerous. Do not underestimate this guy. Put him straight to jail. I would put him to jail, but uh, he'd probably get out of bail for free. Alan. Well, we just talked about Glistener Elf. Let's get the Blighted Agent. Blood Agent is a blue 1 generic 1-1 one, one human rogue with Infect, and it's unblockable. You want to block it? No. Sorry. You can't block. You can't block this, and you take 10 poison. Uh, yeah, I mean, at least with Glistener Elf, I did... Okay, look, at least with Glistener Elf, my defense was to throw creatures into this damn thing. Block. They use Pump Spell. Next turn, they attack. Block. They use pump spell. I'm basically trading creatures for pump spells. But unfortunately, with the Blighted Agent, I can't do that. I'm just dead. They got Blighted Agent. I'm toast. You got pump spells. I got no blocks. It goes coast straight to victory. All right. We got Peanut Butter here with the Allosaurus Shepherd. Oh, God. Do I hate this card. I know. Blue player complaining. I don't care. I'm going to complain. This is a green 1-1 one, one Elf Shaman. That can't be countered. Now, I could I could accept that half of the card, but the fact that green spells in general that they control also can't be countered, that is broken. I think that's absolutely busted. But I can't counter, uh, what's it called? Uh, Natural Order or Crater Hoof Behemoth or any other cards that you cast. Okay, and, and get this. 
You don't even need a win condition in your deck because this card is already a win condition by itself. Green Green for generic. This one this might look like a puny 1-1, one, one, but all of a sudden, all elf creatures you control, they now have the base power of 5-5, five, five, and they become dinosaurs. Don't under underestimate the elves. They befriended the dinosaurs, and they know how to unlock doors. And I'm sure they know how to flush the toilet as well. How about 1-2 creatures? Not for this show. Maybe for next week. Oh! Arreo! I love this card. Unban Arreo! Unban Arreo! And nobody is chanting with nobody. I know I'm by myself here. I don't care. It is a blue, one generic, one, one. F oh, it has flying too. I didn't even know that. Okay, whenever the fourth spell of a turn is played, you flip Arreo into Arreo's Essence. Counter the first spell played by each opponent each turn. Has anyone ever played against this card? I barely got to play with this card uh, up until it eventually got banned. It is a banned card. It got it got straight up banned out of the game, damn it. I can't play this card anywhere else. It's no good anywhere else. Oh, Rayo. I think it got ba yeah, it I know it I know it danger. I don't care. They got a lot of uncounterable stuff these days. Also a lot of mana efficient stuff. Just play some random card. Get it countered and play the real thing. Play removal or something. Anyway, yeah, Arreo. I think this is just absolutely... It's an elegant card. That's how I put it. It's beautiful. I like the art. I like the ability. Four spells and then you've got like... Uh... Well, it's not like... I guess you. it's a lock, right? If you play something like uh, Arcane Laboratory... Play only one spell a turn and then also get it countered. I don't care. It sounds beautiful to me. All right, we start off with super chats. Starting with J. Starting with J. Mother of Runes. Because after all, Mother knows best. The white 1-1 one, one human cleric. Tap. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. It's a 1-1. One, one. My family protects all families. The most important thing is that Mother of Runes can protect herself. She knows how to defend herself. She learned Kung Fu. She has a black belt. And I don't know what else she has, but she can, like, she can block anything. She can block an Eldr... Not an Eldrazi. Anything but an Eldrazi. Okay, protection from a color. Not colorless cards. I, was like, <laughs> I caught myself there. Okay, she can block a giant goblin. It's basically what she can block. Yeah, does not gain from Cullis. Yeah, Eldrazi stonks. If you can, if you have the Eldrazi, Mother... That's too alien for Mother. Mother doesn't know what to do here. That's a foe that she never anticipated. They didn't teach her that in karate class. How to basically move around the tentacles and the squiddy looking creatures. But anyway, yeah, Mother of Runes. Uh, protects your creatures, protects herself. Basically, is a lightning. It's a lightning rod for removal. If there's some other runes in play, you have to spend your removal on it because your removal will be spent on nothing for the rest of the game, unless you can pithing needle this thing. Anyway, great, great suggestion. Okay, we got uh, Starfire Dragon uh, with Sling Gang Lieutenant. Sling Gang, Gang Gang. Sling Gang Lieutenant is a 4-mana 1-1 one, one Goblin. Enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 one, one Goblin, red Goblin creature tokens. You also sack a Goblin. Target player loses one life, and you gain one life. Excellent win condition in the Goblin decks. Tutor it out, and if you have a bunch of useless Goblins, use them all as a... Use something as a... Well, this is a sack outlet in itself, and your opponents lose life, and you gain life. Fantastic win condition. Uh, we just did this one. All right, Zykuren. Welcome. The Goblin Sharpshooter. What, for the combo potential? You like them combos? Goblin Sharpshoot for the jank! It's one of the greatest jank cards of all time. Three mana, one, one. Uh, it does not untap during your untap step, but here's the good news. If a creature dies, you untap the Goblin Sharpshooter. You just have to deal one damage to our creature player. In fact, it's absolutely broken in this list. It can kill anything, it can kill anything on the table. Uh, so yeah, so Goblin Sharpshooter is the answer to all the cards mentioned in this show. Now, if you can give him Death Touch, then it will always kill something, no matter how much damage it deals. Uh, so that's actually a really good way to deal the damage. 
yeah, get in that, get in that damage. And then it untaps, and you can ping something again. And it untaps, and you ping something again, as so long as it has death touch. That's how it works around here. Toads! Wasn't it your idea to, for this show? Judge is familiar. Honestly, I don't think this is like one of the best one ones out there. I do like it though. Also, I really like the picture. Very cute owl. Oh, by the way, it's a it's an Azorius for a one one flyer. You can sack it to counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays one. It's a, four, it's a little bit of a crappy four spike. We got the bird, a much more elegant owl over here. Very beautiful. Very very beautiful. Oh, Toski from Surefire Selves. Toski's insane. Probably a very underrated card. Maybe not. It's pretty expensive. Four mana, one one. Can't be countered. Indestructible. Attacks each combat if able. Has no fear. And then whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Any creature. Right? Not even the Toski itself. Like, I don't know. What is it? I think the original card was Coastal Piracy. Four mana for a card that if you, if a creature dealt damage to the opponent, then all of a sudden uh, you drew a card. So it, all it took was putting Coastal Piracy on a 1-1 one -one that was uncounterable, that was indestructible, to make it playable. But they did it right. They figured it out. Next up, we got Platonic Liquid. Sword of the Meek enables all the 1-1. One -one. Br bring on the buzzer. Uh, yes. Correct. This does not, it is not a 1 1 creature. It's whenever a 1 1 airs the battlefield, it will bring the Sword of the Meek. It's like a boomerang effect. But, uh, yeah, technically not a 1 1. But we're going to donate your super chat. You already knew it already. Such a regular to the show. You know how this works. All right, we got Double, double Eve with the Spike Tail Hatchling. Is that. The pro red thing flying oh no this is the sacrifice thing okay we have a blue one generic one one flyer sacrifice spike tail hatchling counter target spell unless its controller pays one not bad not great L like a level up from the judges familiar there's like a one one i think it's a one one it's like a pro red sack it prevent like all source from a red or something like that all right, let's get the big baddie out of the way. The Orcish Bowmaster, as many people, including Darkest Angel, have mentioned. Orcish, Bow Orcish Bowmaster, a black one, generic 1-1. One, one. Orc Archer with Flash. And when there is the battlefield, and whenever an opponent draws a card, except the first one that they draw in each of their draw steps, Orcish Bowmaster deals one damage to, to any target. And then you amass Orcs 1. So as you draw more cards that are not your card drawn, you get pew, 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 and it brings an orc army. Slowly, but surely. Absolutely disgusting. This is a stupid mistake. I could, you know, I could, I, I don't really want to do it, but like, I could make like a 30 minute documentary on how stupid this card is, how it's a gigantic mistake. It does nothing for the game. It does nothing good. Absolutely nothing good for the game. And it just hurts the game. It takes away our most beloved cards, which are like a lot of cards on today's list. Um, so this is also a card that like just demolishes everything. You blink it, it's even worse. Anyway, I won't get too worked up. I won't get too worked up. Uh, we have Vanish Mantle. Just wanted to say, live streams have helped me learn a lot about magic, especially those AI, <laughs> the AI and the custom streams, helped teach you about magic. Those aren't even real cards. Well, whatever. If it, if you got some value out of it, you're welcome. I appreciate you uh, watching. Okay, we got Jacob with Festering Newt, but with the Bubbling Cauldron, Festering. Uh, how is it? It's like festering. I think I know what you're talking about. The newt! The newt! N E W T. Black 1 1. When it dies, target creature and opponent controls get minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn. That creature gets minus 4 minus 4 if you control a creature named Bog Brew Witch. Which I will not look up. We can just. We can just. Be, let's just. All agree, festering newt is okay. 
Oh, Blue Bomber! I haven't seen you in a while. The card with its own deck, Delver of Secrets. There are many decks named after this card. Where's the OG? I like the OG card. I don't like any of the new ones. All right, this is a blue 1-1 one, one, Human Wizard. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal it. If an instant or sorcery card is revealed this way, transform Delver of Secrets. What's funny is I don't think any Commander players have felt the wrath of this card. Like, this card is what? Just complete junk in Commander. This card's like... Well, I wouldn't say it's... it's These days, it's not broken. It's just good. But before, like in the past, it was broken. Like, it was pretty damn good for the last 10 years of existence. Now it's just like on the cusp of getting cut from all the decks. The OG art is so good. Also, the OG flip. So the deal is uh, if you transform it's a 3-2 flyer. Look at me. Look what I can do. I can fly in the air now. Look, Mom. No plane. No hands. No! Let's get back here. Uh, oh, yeah. I've heard a lot of dumb shenanigans outside my commander world. Well, like, like, there's just so many decks that are built around, like, Ponder, Brainstorm, even Serum Visions sometimes. Not Serum Visions, um... Yeah, Serum Visions. Where you just stack, like, an instant on top of your deck, and you will almost always stack something. On top of that, you can sometimes look at the top card of your library, and if it's, like, junk, you can just, like, fetch it away and, like, fix your draw steps. Like, Delver is just such an efficient deck. And you might think, well, I have so many turns to survive, and, like, it's, like, seven turn clock. But then they go Force Will, and they go Days, and they go Ponder, and then Days you again! And then all of a sudden, it doesn't look so safe anymore, you're gonna die soon! And now they bring out Murktide Regent. Anyway, yeah, it's a dangerous card. It danger. These days it's actually sort of crappy, but whatever. Oh, that's a great one. Scott the Dark Knight with Goblin Lackey. <laughs> when I see this card... My only thought is, kill this thing on the spot. It must die. Uh, if this thing survives a few more, like even one turn, I'm probably dead. It's a red 1-1 one, one goblin. It deals damage to you. You put a goblin permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, I, I kid you not, if we, if this card did not really exist, and we saw this in like an AI video, we would just say, it's danger. It's broken. There's no way they can print this card. And yet, it actually exists. They're uh, premier permanent that they put on the battlefield is Muxus, uh, and it can be very ugly. By turn two, you can basically be stone cold dead. Very, very strong card. Ooh, this is small but simple, Narcomoeba. It's, um, it's very unique. It's a blue one, uh, one generic one, one illusion. Forget the casting cost. No one actually casts this card. Well, it's happened, but you're in a you're in a bad spot if you're actually casting this card. Uh, but when it's put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may put it on. Sorry, if it's put into your graveyard from your library, you may put it on the battlefield. So if you milled it, if you dredged it into the graveyard, um, basically from deck to graveyard is all fair game, and you get into play. Now the deal is. It's supposed to trigger things like Prized Amalgam or any creature where if some or something enters the battlefield, um, they, other creatures can come from the graveyard to the battlefield. And it's like a free 1-1 one, one otherwise. It's like, you know what it is? It's the Memnite of Dredge and all those other Milly decks. Or Self Mill, I should say. It is, it's the Memnite of Self Mill. And it's quite strong. Can't underestimate it. It does have flying. You can't block it. It's going to get you eventually. All right. We go with Platonic Liquid. Probably not a meme suggestion this time. Uh, Big Willer of Wills. Willer of Wills. Blue says winning. I love winning. Okay. We got a blue, blue, three generic, one, one human wizard. Tap to gain control of target creature with power less than or equal to the number of creatures you control. What? Gain control of target creature with power less than or equal to the number of creatures. So if I have one, I can take a one power creature. If I have two, we hit the two power creature. If I have three, okay, I get it. We swipe, we're swiping, and we get to take every turn after. We also get to take something every single turn. 
You don't kill this thing. I'm swiping every single turn. It only gets stronger. Now I have another creature, which allows me to take the bigger thing. Keep going after the bigger fish. We're not, we're not going to let our uh, memes be dreams. Shame we aren't doing one twos. We see missing the most powerful creature in the game. I have no idea what that is. But we'll find out eventually. Um, the Lawnmower Elves! I know what you're talking about. Now in Pioneer, this is actually broken. It's funny, there's not a lot of removal on turn one in Pioneer. So having like turn one Lanor Elves is actually big game. It's as weird as it sounds, like the best turn one plays in Pioneer is like turn one Thoughtseize, turn one Lanor Elves. Like, uh, and the only decks that can compete with Lanor Elf decks are like basically the, well, some black and red decks. Um, but yeah, Lanor Elf super, I don't know. I don't want to call it broken, but it's basically like the Soul Ring of Pioneer. And it is just a Mana Dork. It has served a good purpose for many ramp decks. Or many big mid-range chunky decks over the millions of years. So for that, we commend the services of the Lanor Elves. Whereas maybe we should call the Lawnmower Elves. You see these blades? These are going to cut your lawn in half. All right, next up, we've got Jacob Thune. Thank you very much for your super chat. Skrelv. Skrelv has uh, proven himself, has he? Okay, we have a white 1-1 one, one Frexian Might with Toxic 1. So players deal damage by this also get a poison counter. Skrelv can't block, but is not intending to. You can also pay a Frexian White tap. Choose a color. Another target creature you control gains Toxic 1. And hexproof from that color until end of turn. It can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. So it's like a mix of Glistener Elf in a weird way, but but it's mostly like a Mother of Runes. Mostly like a Mother of Runes. Anyone play with this card? Anybody? Anybody? Someone playing with Skrelv Defector might. I know there's like. I don't. I mean, I, won't, I wouldn't go as far as far as to say that there are Facebook fan pages devoted to this card. I should look if there's Facebook fan pages devoted to Bitter Blossom. I would not be surprised. People who are devoted to Bitter Blossom, who need to collect all of the Bitter Blossoms, also must pray to the Bitter Blossom every night. Pray for their one one in exchange for a pint of their blood. It's a staple and standard. I believe it. All right, we got uh, Galen with Arcbound Worker. It's a one. It's a one mana. You know what? I'm disqualifying this. It's not actually a one one. I know it's going to come into play as a one one, but disqualify. It's actually a zero zero. Wait for the zero zero show. We'll have a zero zero show one day, and that will be in it. Okay, we got Monacala with the Yoshimaru. Ever faithful because he is the best boy. The bestest boy. Oh, okay. We got a 1-1 one, one for 1. It's a dog. Whenever another legendary permanent enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Yoshimaru. Ever faithful. Also has partner. You can have two commanders. They both have partner. Oh, my God. So, like, I don't... <laughs> is it worth having this as a partner? Of all the partners you can choose from, you choose the 1-1 one, one dog. That is like a weird champion of the parish in, in some weird way. All right, well, to each their own. All right, Zykurin. What do you got for us? We got the Boros Elite. I have lost many times to Boros Elite. Because when Boros Elite attacks in a band, not literally a band, but a battalion, he gets plus two, plus two. Okay, we have a white one, one. Boros Elite, uh, if whenever Boros Elite or at least two other creatures attack, Boros Elite gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. It was used to be... um. Part of like early, it was like part of standard aggro decks. Was in some modern zoo decks. I can't imagine this card seeing any play in commander, but uh, I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Allosaurus Rider, that's not a 1 1. Or is it? All right, even by technicalities, I guess so. Okay, it's a green. Green, five generic, elf warrior. You can exile two green cards from your hand rather than pay Allosaurus Rider's mana cost. Its power and toughness are each equal to one plus the number of lands you control. So if you have no lands in play, it is technically a 1-1 creature, which has actually happened many times. 
I have definitely been in a situation where someone did not have any lands in play and they played an Allosaurus Rider. They just went like, pitch two green cards, Allosaurus Rider, Simeon Spirit Guide, Simeon Spirit Guide, uh, Manamorphose into blue green, Neoform, and I was, I was dead. That hand actually happened, all right? This, that was a real hand. That was four cards. And it was very annoying to lose like that. It was not pleasant. Next super chat from the Farazen. Oh, we got a Lucia, Lucia Kane. Lucia Kane is a red, blue, green, one generic, one, one human ty tyranid wizard with spiritual leader. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a counter, a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Psychic stimulus. Tap, add double colorless. When you when you next cast a spell with X and its cost, or activate an ability with X and its activation cost this turn, copy that spell or ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. Hmm. Can I use that man on the spell? It didn't really specify that. I'm assuming you can, though. I'm assuming you can. Zack is like, Scoot Swarm! There's a huge meme card. It's, a, it's like a meme that actually isn't a meme. Because we've all seen the arena. You've seen the gifts, right? All the clips of arena with Scoot Swarms turning into millions of more Scoot Swarms. Because it's a green 2 generic 1-1 one, one insect with landfall. When the land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. But if you control 6 or more lands, which is not the hardest part... Uh, if you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm. So Scoot Swarm then just multiplies like crazy. You need to find another bug to go eat the Scoot Swarms. You gotta find the mongooses or the snakes or, or something. What do you think eats a Scoot Swarm? Probably... Ugh, I don't know what would be a predator to an insect like this. Galen, have we done... Have the Timmies who tap for one... Who tapped to do one damage been done yet? Uh, depends on which Timmy's. We've gone over one Timmy. One Timmy so far. The Jaded with Peacekeeper. Keeping the peace. We got the white two generic one one. During your upkeep, you got pay two. Or you bury your Peacekeeper. Creatures cannot attack. Completely redundant one, one power here. I guess. No, hold on. I was like, can, but it can block. Peacekeeper can block. No, Peacekeeper cannot block. Because nothing is going to attack. I guess there's a world where they play Dress Down and then it, you uh, the, the one power is just randomly useful. Okay, next up we got Crowned Stag. Thank you very much for your super chat. Amplifier. By the way, got to Mythic with it right now. Oh, is that right? Got to Mythic with the Amplifier. Red, red, two generic elemental. It's a 1-1. One, one. Now at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Until your next turn, Amplifier's base power becomes twice that card's power, and its base toughness becomes twice that card's toughness. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh my goodness, this card does a lot for a form. This doesn't even feel like a creature. It feels like a sorcery or something. The beginning of your upkeep. Or it feels like an enchantment. Reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Definitely, it's not feel very creature-like, but all right. Does some powerful stuff. But you know what's also powerful? The power of deals from FusionGamingOnline.com. Because here is the first place I go to check and buy all my magic cards. I get them. For, I get my merfolk from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. I get my artifacts from Doctor Who. I get my counter spells from Wilds of Eldraine. And when I do that, I always use coupon code Nikachu at checkout to get 5% off all my purchases. And we're also gonna thank Manitraders, the premier place to rent magic cards online. To unlock your creativity. You wanna play Commander? You can't do that on Arena, but you can on Magic Online. I swear you can. And they all say they're like power seven, but don't play C, there's like no CEDH, no CEDH, no CEDH, no CEDH. Power four, no CEDH. Power seven, no CEDH. Power 9, no CEDH. So just don't play CDs. <laughs> there's very few, there's just a few people who want to play CDH. You can find the game though. 
And anyway, you can go play Commander on Magic Online. Play any Commander deck you want using my Manager's man link in the description below. Save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore 1JV. I'll just be right back. I don't have my T here. Start my show with my, without my tea. All right, back to the one ones. Back to one ones. Look, amplifier. All right, who are we taking here? Um, who hasn't got a card yet? JML says, "No, I'm light. I'll be like the subject of shame asking for repeat. Repeat. It's possible." That's why you just throw cards to the Oblivion. Just make sure you don't super chat and it's all good. Yeah, Toski was done. Take Darkest Angel's advice, that's all. Zack with Warren Instigator. You know, a lot of, um, there's a lot of great goblin cards. This card will smoke you if you don't block it. It's a red, red, one, one, double striker. And when it deals damage to an opponent, you may put a goblin creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's goblin lackey times two. So goblin lackey punches you a little bit. This one like smacks you hard. You put like, you could put is Muxus legendary? You could put like Muxus and I don't know. Um Cranko at the same time. It's completely busted. This card is probably really powerful in Commander. Because you just play it and someone's gonna be open and you like double hit them. And then you have like two more goblins on the battlefield. It's probably really disgusting. <clears throat> did you show the original art of Goblin Lackey? That's a huge part of it. Uh, I did not. I did not. Hold on, I got my cheat sheet here. Chen Quen Itzu did not do that, Chen Quen Itzu. That's right. I can pronounce your name now. Aha! <laughs> not that I know much uh, Mandarin myself. Um, okay, time for a super chat. Scott, Scott, what do you got for us? You've got, uh, I'm gonna try and cheat, but Ink Moth Nexus. Allow it! It'd be a land, but it also is a 1 1 creature when it becomes a creature. You can also, it actually has one really broken ability that a lot of people completely uh, overlook on Ink Moth Nexus. You can tap it for a mana. Believe it or not, taps for mana. All right, pay one. It becomes a 1-1 one, one Blink Moth artifact creature token with flying. Or sorry, not a token, a uh, creature with flying. And in fact, until end of turn, it is still a land. Is this all in Japanese? Oh, damn it. So what, am I pronouncing your name wrong? Well, as far as I'm concerned, you're gonna be Chen Quint Itza on this show. Because that was my translation effort. Uh, we got Mike from Minnesota. We're not far. I'm from Winnipeg. You're the closest. You're probably the closest viewer to me. Unless there's a bunch of random people from Winnipeg in chat. Okay, we got uh, Bardastico. Uh, Champion of the Parish. I used to be so envious of Champion of the Parish. I wanted a champion so damn bad. I wanted a champion in Merfolk, damn it. I saw the power and the potential of the of the champion of the parish. It's a 1-1, but whenever another human enters the battlefield, you put a plus one plus one counter on champion of the parish. So it becomes a 2-2, two, two, then a 3-3, three, three, then a 4-4. Four, four. You know, I, there's so many times I had to defend myself against an 8-8 eight, eight champion of the parish. It's stupid. It's a very, very good card. That will, well, the history books will know that this card is absolutely... It's not as busted as it used to be, but damn, it's good. The VTuber channel. Oh, no. Thank you very much for the super chat. But we did land our elves. We just did it. It's a must kill most of the time. You're absolutely right. If you, want, if you have another suggestion, I'll keep a lookout for it in chat. But until then, we are going to donate the super chat to... Um, Alan says, don't forget to vote champion of the perished. Yeah, this is the meme. This is the meme card. Champion of the... Just put P. Yeah, the perished. P-E! Yeah, black one, one zombie. This is the 
Sadly, the champion wasn't much of a champion after all. He went to the gutter. Whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on champion of the perished. Yeah, with this now it only speaks to zombies from here on out. It's lawnmower elves. Yeah, I forgot. It's lawnmower elves. Uh, we had Erland with anti perished. Oh no, that this. I think you're talking about this card. Score an ego test. Absolute <laughs> bull crap. Not a chance. No way. Uh. Zach has L seed of life's L seed of life's bounty. Oh yeah, this card. It's actually seen a lot of play, actually. So white one one with life link. You can pay one sack it and target creature or enchantment you control gains protection of, the, of your choice until end of turn. It's uh, sort of like a sort of like a crappier mother of runes, but still mother of runes nonetheless. At least a mother of runes you want to attack with to some degree. You know, you attack, you gain a little, little bit of life. You attack, you gain a little bit of life. You just rinse and repeat that until you have to sack it to defend your stuff. Next super chat we've got from Blue Bomber. Uh, thank you very much. Everyone's favorite taxman, S for Sentinel. Ristic study on a creature. The white one one. Human soldier. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn. Draw a card! Which is also very good. Unless that player pays X, where X is S for Sentinel's power. Do you pay the one? Do you pay the two? Do you pay the 11? Sometimes when you're up against hammer time, this thing has, is 11-11. It is a disgustingly large creature. Um, and yeah, yeah, you're not paying that tax. Never, can't happen. Not going to happen. Why do people hate the CMC matters from Scourge? I like that mechanic. I don't remember what that mechanic is. Uh, we got Bojack Yellow with Cami of the Bamboo. I have no idea what the hell this is. Oh, it's an arena card. It's great in the primetime decks and timeless if alchemy is allowed. Sure, yeah, we allow alchemy. Of course, unfortunately, people. Well, no, I, there's a lot of you play arena out here. When Cami of the ba Bamboo Groves enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. You can also channel it. Pay three, discard Cami of the Bamboo gro Groves to conjure two cards named Forest into your hand. Oh, that's not bad. It's a one mana, one, one. Uh, or, it's a two-in-one. If you need two lands, you just exchange it for two lands. You got two lands. Look, it slices and dies. You can cut it. You can leave it whole and it tax for one. Or you can cut it in half. You can cut it up into three pieces. And you can also tap it for mana. Uh, next up, we've got Chen Quen Itsu. I only know bad cards this, this game. No suggestions. All right, that is totally fair. So we will donate your super chats. Two. Uh, Dryad Arbor is a land slash creature. All right, Dryad Arbor. Dryad Arbor, Arbor is the one-one land creature Dryad Forest Dryad with the uh, activated ability Tap to add a green mana to your mana pool. It's like a land, but better. Except it's vulnerable. You can die to any removal. Uh, no warranty, no returns. Uh, if your Dryad Arbor dies to Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, Swords to Plowshares, Prismatic Ending, Arc Orcish Bowmasters, Lava Dart, there are no refunds. Big long warranty list on Dryad Arbor. A lot of things can go wrong with this damn card. Okay, next up we've got... Let's... Ooh, Steel Overseer is an amazing card. I remember just getting completely overrun by this thing. So two mana one one. Uh, it's a construct. Tap. Put a one plus one plus one counter on each artifact creature you control. So I mean, it takes advantage if you can like you know basically puke out your hand. And you like put a bunch of counters on stuff. This is the old fashioned. You know, this is like proliferate the hard way. So for any, now that I think about it, this is like proliferate, but in like the hard way of doing it. Hard mode. And with artifacts that don't naturally put counters on themselves so well. Yeah, I'm thinking like Hardened Scales is sort of like a proliferate deck. Except it don't proliferate, but does count ca uh, care about counters all the time. Okay, we got Frozen again with Lucia. Didn't I do this one? 
Did you super chat the same thing twice? I think you did. Yeah, we did that one. All right, well, we'll skip. We'll donate it. We'll donate this one to Namesy Her Hermit Druid. Oh, this card. Yeah, it's a green one generic one one hermit. Uh, and a druid. Sorry, human druid. It's not a hermit. It is a green. For a green tap, reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a basic land card. Put that card into your hand and all other cards revealed this way into your graveyard. Hopefully some dangerous stuff in that graveyard. Uh, Carlo with the Skirk Prospector. A single red mana for a 1-1. One, one. But you get to sack a rend... Not random goblin. You sack a goblin. Sack a crappy one. You add one red mana to your mana pool. Just a few mana short from casting your muxes. Well, just, uh... You just sack your children and uh, you got it. It will work. Okay, next super chat we got from Zykurin, uh, which is the Predator Ooze. Slimy boy, hard to kill. Oh, this thing, the three mana 1-1, one, one, yeah, with indestructible. When it attacks, it gets a counter. However, whenever a creature dealt damage by Predator Ooze dies this turn, also gets a counter. It just keeps growing and growing and gr it's the unstoppable blob. Very slimy boy. Very blobby. Mux is you mean captive audience? Is that what you're casting with Skirk Prospectors? What do you guys try to put in play with Skirk Prospector? Captive audience or Muxus? I think Muxus is more on flavor and also easier to tutor. Avatar Woe says, Nikachu hates Titania. How about Harmonic Sliver? I don't know what Titania is. Oh yeah, this, this is a sick card. You don't even need to be a Sliver deck to play this. It's a white, green, one generic, one, one. All Slivers have, when this permanent enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or creature. But be careful, if your opponent is playing Changelings, they're gonna get the ability. They get everything this card has. Uh, next up. Okay, who hasn't got a card yet? The big squig with squee. Which one? I guess one of the OG? Squee Goblin Nabob? I always thought this card sucked. Like, it had some, like, really crappy niche application. But overall, I thought it was bad. Oh, no, you know what? This actually sees vintage play. It's like a key card in, um, uh, Bizarre Baghdad decks. Okay, it's a red, two generic, one, one goblin. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return Squee Goblin the Bob from your graveyard to your hand to be exchanged for delicious new cards. Yeah, more like the big Squeeg. <laughs> well said. Well said. Uh, what do we have next? Uh, where is that super chatter from earlier? Who got accidentally sniped on the land where elves. They, they, they didn't have another suggestion after that. Poor them. Don't worry, everyone gets sniped. Just throw it. It's the VTuber channel. Come back. Just give out another suggestion. Problem is we had land where elves earlier. Okay. Uh, I will take... I think I took one from it. Okay, we have to take another super chat. Champion of Lambhold. Perish or... Parish, choose. Oh, okay, I'll choose the first one because we actually haven't done that one. Champion of Lambolt. Well, not related to Champion of the Parish because it's green and not a 1-1 one, one cre- not a 1-1 one, one mana creature. Okay, we have a green-green, one generic for a 1-1 one, one human warrior. Creatures with power less than Champion of Lambolt's power can't block creatures you control. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a counter on Champion of Lambolt. The champions are the champions of counters. They know how to count. Antonio with Royal Assassin. Oh, God. Honestly, I don't think this card is any good anymore. Does anyone play this card? I guess it's fine in Commander. Like, why would you attack the person with the Royal Assassin? At the same time, it might, like, gain the, like, like a lot of attention. Like, people are probably going to hate on this card. Like, I don't want to attack because the stupid Royal Assassin is going to beat me. You love that, dude? All right, so we're going to give it a pass. Like, I guess it's good in Commander. I just think it's such an aged card. Like, it hasn't aged well, but I guess it's fine. Beamtown Bullies does love this card. Does it? Alrighty, then. Surefire sells with the Viserysir. 
One black, one one. Sack a creature, scry one. Also as a vampire. Also a wizard! If you need that for a wizard deck. Any wizards out here? Wizards, anybody? Aren't we all technically wizards? No, I guess we're planeswalkers. I don't know the difference. What is the difference between a planeswalker and a wizard? Or are all planeswalkers wizards to some degree? I, feel, I think if you deal in magic, you're a damn wizard, warlock, or a witch or something. Otherwise, where is the where's the magic coming from? Uh, next up, we got Slade with Orcish Lumberjack. Ooh, that's a unique one. Orcish Lumberjack. No, just doing a hard day's work. Cutting down them trees. We have a red 1-1. One, one. It's an orc. Tap sack of forest. Add three mana. Any combination of either red or green to your mana pool. Basically, uh, chops down forests, turns them into black lotus. That's quite a magic trick. Wizards are nerdy. Planeswalkers just chads with sparks. The sparky wizards, I guess. There are tiers of wizards, the highest being the planeswalker. Planeswalkers walk planes. Wizards do wizard other wizardry stuff. I just find that it's still a wizard. If you planeswalk, you're a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Okay, we got King Ginger Hell's Caretaker. This is a 4 mana 1-1 one, one horror. Tap, sack a creature, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only during your upkeep. Ooh, that's awkward. Why during your upkeep? It doesn't cost you any mana. You just do the old switcheroo. I exchange this uh, Kremiel Danish for your delicious doorstop. No, hold on. It's supposed to be this crummy old... Give you this delicious door stop for your crummy old Danish. That's what it is. Starfire Dragon preemptively answered that. The real question is why is there a difference between planeswalk and planeswalk? Ah, yes, the real questions. The real questions that need to be answered around here. Okay, Re with uh, Rain. Academy Chancellor. This is a three mana one wine. This is an old card. Uh, whenever you are a permanent you control as the target of a spell or ability controlled by one of your opponents, you may draw a card. And then if Rain Academy Chancellor is enchanted, you also may draw a card. I'll take it. Whenever you, whenever you are a permanent, and it's just, it's guaranteed. This is fantastic. This is only 25 cents. I think this is a very interesting card. If rain is enchanted, you may draw a card. And if, so you get, to, you get to draw two cards if there's like, I don't know, a curiosity on this thing or something. Oh, very cool. Platonic liquid on the planeswalker discussion. I always thought it was because planeswalkers can actually manipulate the physical reality of planes. Players are planeswalkers, whereas wizards, etc., are using the magic that is part of the plane. So the way I look at planeswalkers are, they are wizards that can travel planes. That's it. That they're they're just super wizards, effectively. That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it, and I will stick to it. Okay, we got Mike with Prodigal Sorcerer. A lot, a lot of people are bringing out like the good old days cards. You know, that's a card that was good back in the day. Let's go get it's Tim, right? Let's go get the OG Tim. We got Tim! For a blue 2 generic, tap to do one damage to any target. And frankly, you would laugh at this card, but actually this card can beat up every single card on today's show. Uh, ben Mansfield with the Cauldron Familiar. Did they errata this card on Arena? It can't block? Here's the battlefield. You just put loose one life. You gain one life. Sack of food. Return cauldron familiar from the graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, so like it's basically the same thing, but it can't block. So I mean, it can combo off, but like you're not doing any no chump blocking sacking going around here. Okay, we have a black one one. Here's the battlefield. Opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Sack of food. Uh, cauldron familiar comes from your graveyard back to the battlefield. Welcome, Killer Kirby. 
Oh yeah, we can kill everything except Toski. That's right. Toski, very invincible. Thank you for letting us know, Summer Mermaid Star. Uh, okay, Underworld Paradise with Eye Twitch. Is this any good? It's a black 1-1 one, one flyer. When Eye Twitch dies, learn. I swear, this sucks. I'm not, not to hate on your card, but like... This is one of the worst cards of today. <laughs> uh, it if it entered the battlefield and you learned, like, that would be fine, I guess. This is literally just a 1-1 one, one flyer, basically. It's so some assembly required to get the full value out of this thing. Is, patch is Patchwork Automaton 1-1? One, one? Patchwork Automaton. Oh, this thing's insanely broken. It's a two-mana 1-1 one, one with Ward 2, so good luck killing it. And whenever you cast an artifact spell, which is easy, put a plus one, plus one counter on Patchwork Automaton. It often feels like I'm getting attacked by a gigantic, vanilla, indestructible creature. Because I can't target with any damn thing. I don't have enough mana! Ward 2 might as well be Ward a million. Ward 2 does go a long way. Ward 1 does nothing. The utter disrespect for stats. <laughs> Is this a standard all-star? It's not even in standard anymore. That's Strixhaven. That's like super old news. Okay, the Red Scout. Thank you very much for your super chat. Infect fam, rise up. The Plague Stinger. Are, are all the Infectors literally one ones? We've gone through like three Infectors now. Black one generic one one. Flying. And in fact, not unblockable, but close enough. Flying one of the most uh, underrated mechanics in all of Magic the Gathering. Aha, the old lore before the idea of sparks. Planeswalkers were just really powerful wizards that could cast spells to travel between planes. That's that's how I'm interpreting it. Uh, okay, we have next up, we've got Anna with Ben Ben. Uh, a, a key hermit? What? A key hermit? Oh, this is literally the name. I thought Ben Ben was going to be some, like, weird... How do I put it? Like, a, a strange nickname of a card that I didn't, I've never even heard of. Okay, that's totally fine. We got Ben Ben. It's a red, red, two generic, one, one. Tap Ben Ben. Deals damage to target attacking creature equal to the number of untapped mountains you control. What a weird card. I have to have my mountains untapped. And I gotta tap it. And something needs to be attacking. Very strange ability. That's me! That's my nickname. Ben Ben. Welcome, Ben Ben. <laughs> uh, okay, we got Panky uh, with Goblin Welder. That's a banger. Goblin Welder is a red mana 1 1 Goblin Artificer. Tap. Choose a target artifact or player. Sorry, choose target artifact a player controls and target artifact card in that player's graveyard. If both targets are still legal as this ability resolves, we go whoop, and that player simultaneously sacks the artifact and returns the artifact card to the battlefield. Get your uh, painter servants back, your grindstones, your, um, that's basically it. Those are the good ones. That's what you're going for. You're going for the painter servant com combo, damn it. Is Painter Servant any good in Commander now? They banned the damn thing for a while, didn't they? Okay, we got Edgy Boy with a Putrid Imp. Putrid indeed. Pretty good sack outlet, a black 1-1. One, one. Discard a card, it gains flying until end of turn. Frankly, it's just a sack outlet. Like, it's really bizarre. It's not there for attacking. It's just dump your creature, reanimate it. Simple. Simple and clean. You can attack with it, though. Look, it's, uh, Chinquil loves the Putrid Imp. Phoenix Chick? Is this a real card? Phoenix Chick. We got chicks around here. It's a one. It's a red 1-1 one, one flying haste. And I can't block. That's okay. We're going straight to their head. Forwards, not backwards. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you can pay double red. If you do, return Phoenix Chick from the graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped and attacking with a plus one, plus one counter on it. You can't keep the chick down. Justin G with the experiment one. Before Champion of the Parish, there was an experiment. Which experiment? This one. The experiment one. 
it's a green one one human ooze with evolve little you might know evolve is whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature you get a counter on this card so remove two plus one plus one counters from experiment one, one to regenerate it so it does not die to board wipes or lethal damage or uh removal there's a bunch of stuff there killer kirby can you do beloved chaplain beloved chaplain so happy you did my idea by the way oh is this your idea i can't remember can't remember whose idea was this but you, you guys the coffee crew you guys send me a lot of ideas sometimes they're they're bangers i think this is a great idea by the way this one one show because i can evolve this to the one two show the two one show the two two the two three we're going we're going straight to seven sevens and ten tens Okay, we got the Beloved Chaplain, a white one generic 1-1. One, one. Protection from creatures? That is not how I thought I was going to get blocked all day. Very weird. Very one with nature, though. Nomad and Nantuku, eagle and elephant. All the bird and beasts are charmed by his quiet dignity. Be one with nature and nature won't bother you, I guess. Lucas with a knick-knack oaf. Knick-knack. This is a real card. Does it count? Absolutely. I don't see why not. It's not illegal. It's a 1-1. One, one. X in the casting cost doesn't bother me. It's an oof. Nick knack oof enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. When Nick knack oof enters the battlefield, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of aura cards with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put on the battlefield on the bottom of your library in a random order. So it could be a 1-1 one, one on turn 1, or it could be a gigantic creature actually very very nice card very nice okay we got the big squig uh cloud of fairies that reminds me there's a lot of fairies at one one status it's banded popper what is that broken it's a blue one generic one one flyer Enters the battlefield, untap up to two lands. Probably combo too much with what's it called? Uh, the other fairy, the fairy that counters spells equal the number of fairies you control and play. So you just play Cloud of Fairies, untap for free, and then play Spell Stutter Sprite. Actually, hold on, we can put that a Spell Stutter Sprite. Spell Stutter. I love this card. I think it's a cool card. It's really good versus cat like uh, crashing footfalls or ancestral vision or something like that because it costs zero. Okay, it's a blue one generic one one flash flying enters the battlefield counter target spell with converted mana cost X or less where X is the number of fairies you control. Okay, next up we get oh no I think uh, cloud of fairies was okay Gillum. We said no card yet. I try to get to everybody so we get to Gillum. Jedar Ghoul Caller of Nephelia. Oh, this guy. This guy won me a lot of cube games. It's a black one generic 1-1 one, one human wizard. And at the beginning of your end step, if you control no creature with Decayed, you create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token with Decayed. But, like, you don't mind. You're going to just throw this stupid zombie away over and over and over again. You know, throw it away, then it dies. Throw it away to attack, and it dies. Uh, anyway, you don't mind. Because you just keep getting a new one every single turn. It's basically is a factory for zombies. Where he gets the zombies from, I don't know. You know, I don't ask these questions. I just uh, I just use them to attack. I'm not going to ask these questions. You know what makes Spill Sutter Sprite better? It, it's this niche enchantment that costs a black. <laughs> yeah, the Bitter Blossom. You don't get anything in play by the time that you play that Bitter Blossom. Okay, we got next super chat. Coming from T King Ginger. Oh, I knew you got sniped from a mile away. Toski, my favorite green commander. If done, donate. You better believe we'll donate. And we will donate to Sam Hansen with Vine uh, Lasher. Kudzu. Vine Lasher Kudzu, a green one generic 1-1 one, one plant. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Vine Lasher Kudzu. So basically, champion the parish for landfall. I got your gist. I get your gift. Just no, I'm using the wrong word here. If you like Toski, Vashta Narada is a Toski at home, is it? Vashta 
We looked at this thing the other day. Black 2 generic 1 1 alien horror indestructible shadow. But I don't draw cards. I don't draw cards. But I mean, it qualifies for the show, though. It's indestructible and it has shadow. And it's a 1 1. It does work. All right, time for super chats. It's super chat time. It's super chat time. Darkest Angel with why to hear you say Lanor Elves again. Lanor Elves. Oh, sorry. Lawnmower Elves. Lawnmower Elves. Lawnmower Elves. They will give you the cleanest lawn job you've ever seen. Deathrite Shaman is a 1 2. Okay, we gotta donate this thing. Oh, wild the cattle. There we go, from Alexander. Talk about, like, breaking the rules without breaking the rules. It's a green 1-1. One, one. Normally, you're not playing this as a 1-1, one, one, though. It's a cat warrior. And it gets plus 1, plus 1 if you have a mountain, but also gets a plus 1, plus 1 if you have a plains. Next super chat coming from uh, Hot from Scott, the Goblin Snowman. Sweet blocks for time. Goblin Snowman. It's stupid, cowardly goblins hiding behind that snowman. It's a four mana of one one. And whenever goblin snowman blocks, prevent all combat damage that be dealt to and dealt by it this turn. Because it's a snowman. It's not really an actual person. It's not even a thing. Tap goblin snowman deals one damage to target creature. It's blocking. So basically, I, I don't even know how you block because like it's an inanimate object. Damn it! It's just sitting there. Like the enemy has to accidentally ram into you. It should basically say, cannot block. I have no movement. I'm a damn snowman. <laughs> well, whatever. I can just think of the flavor. Oh, to get no in order to get to your, your Planeswalker uh, controller, I have to get through the snowman. I really could go all the way around it. There's so much space. Okay, yo, little Ted with uh, Goblin Welder. You got sn Did you get snipes? Let's look at Goblin Welder. Stronger player controls. Yeah. You got sniped. I'm sorry. I'm gonna donate that one, yo little Ted. We'll give it to I don't know if Nate got one today. Dog to Hunter. There is something called Dog to Hunter. It's a three mana one one. Tap destroy target creature token. Oh! For the creature token decks. Don't make your tokens too big. He'll slam. What a nomad. Ben, you're trolling. The card sucks. Scornful Egotist is terrible. It will be on the least dangerous 1-1 one -one show. The least dangerous. I can milk that for forever. Justin Stevens, Vampire of the Dire Moon. Not a bad card. It's a lifelink death touch, right? For a 1-1 one, one for 1. I am right. Death touch and a lifelink. What a combo. And the next up we go Salizi with a... Have we done Blood Artist? We have not actually done Blood Artist. Yeah, we haven't done the Blood Artist at this point. Look at the new Blood Artist art. We have a black 1 generic 0 1 vampire. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, Dark Player loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Actually, still played even today. Like, in competitive decks. Oh, it's a 1-1. One, one. It's disqualified. Damn it. Yeah. Blood Artist is a 0-1. Don't worry. We'll have a 0-0 zero, zero show and a 0-1 show. Blood Artist time will come. There will be one day for the Blood Artist. Okay, so we got to donate this one. We're going to donate to... Someone who was here for the first time, Z-Man Vader. Hello, first time I can catch a stream. Omnath, Locus of Mana. That is no way that card is. Locus of, there's no way it's a 1-1. One, one. Oh my god! It Omnath is a 1-1. One, one. It's a green 2 generic elemental. You don't lose unspent green mana as steps and phases end. And Omnath, Locus of Mana gets plus 1, plus 1 for each unspent green mana you have. I was like, I am, I'm disqualifying this card so fast. Like, and then I'm briefly looking at all the Omnaths. They're like four fours, right? But this one actually is a one one. No, cannot board it. Cannot board. Okay, we got Nacho. What do you got us for a Nacho? Poison Dart Frog. 
It's a green, one generic, one, one frog with reach. Add one man of any color. You can also pay two. Poison dart frog gets death touch until end of turn. Can choose to kill you or choose to let itself die. The choice is really in the poison dart frog. But will you trust when you attack into it? You never know what that poison dart frog will do. It could do anything. It's got that crazy look in its eye. All right, we got the Kiwi Lemonade with uh, Katilda. Dawn Heart Prime. As a commander, anyway. Katilda. This is a white green 1-1 one, one creature. It's a warlock. So it's a witch in some course. Witch wizard thingy. Okay, protection from werewolves. Human creatures you control have tap. Add one man of any uh, of this creature's colors. Oh, it turns all the creatures into mana dorks. They've taught them the way of the land, the, the lawnmower elves. And uh, also, we have six mana tap. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Pretty neat. There's Chub Toad. What are you guys talking about? I have no idea what you guys are talking about, but I'm just going to assume it's all good stuff. Okay, Zai Curran. Uh, you've got Entrails Feaster. Underrated Zombie. Z zombie Cat. Okay, it's a black 1-1 one, one zombie cat. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may remove a creature card in your gra in a graveyard from the game. Could be any graveyard. Could be yours. And then if you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Entrails Feaster. If you don't tap Entrails Feaster. It's interesting. So it's a 1-1, one, one, but it's graveyard hate. But it can only hit the creatures. But that's fine. That's not bad. Like the most uh, reanimatable cards are the creatures anyhow. Okay, we got the amazing uh, Crack Monkey. Oh, God. Uh, Chaplain. Beloved Chaplain for Killer Kirby. Beloved Chaplain. Oh, we did this one. You sniped yourself with Killer Kirby's suggestion. That is the weirdest way. Okay, that's the fourth time someone got sniped. Like, you didn't really snipe yourself, but you sort of put yourself in the line of fire there. Okay, so we'll donate this uh, super chat too. Maybe we should donate to Killer Kirby because this one was for Killer Kirby. We did Champion of Lambolt. We did all the champions. All the champions are done. Oh, the Spore Frog. Gotta keep pouring out those suggestions, people. You never know when someone's gonna screw up with the super chat. Oh, I should also do this one the Doomed Traveler. Okay, anyway, Spore Frog. It's Fog! It's green one one. You sack it, you fog. Uh, doomed traveler. Oops, did I not spell this right? Okay, white one one human uh, soldier. When it dies, you create a one one white spirit creature token. So really, when it dies, it's like it didn't die at all. Okay, we got allocations with the sc scornful ego test. All right, well you super chat the damn thing. He was a one one. Now he is far more. <laughs> Scornful ego test. Hey, yeah, you like you happy people? You got the damn scornful ego test on the battlefield or in the show. Eight mana for a one one. That's it. You are better off paying three mana for the damn two two. Fools! I was a one one all along, and you thought about killing me. Foolish, foolish opponent. Uh, okay, so next up we'll have Pyrobob 5. Have we done Dragon Rage? Oh, we did not do Dragon Rage Chandler. That's true. This card absolutely is busted. I hate this card. It's a red 1 1. You cast a non creature spell. You surveil one. You look, it's, it's scry, but you put the cards in your graveyard to fill it up for delirium and threshold and all sorts of other crap. And it's got Delirium itself. As long as there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard. It gets plus two, plus two. It has flying. So it has evasion. Attacking each combat is not a problem. Because it was born to attack. It was it was, uh, it was, was born with... <laughs> Dragon Rage Channel was born with blood on their hands. Literally and maybe figuratively. Okay, Jonathan Taves. Uh, with Commander Combo All-Star. Triskillion. Triskillion. 
Yeah, it is a combo card. It is a six mana one one. Enters the battlefield with uh, three plus one plus one counters on it. Remove a counter to uh, deal a single damage to anything. Anything you want. Next, we got Brandon Grave. A fog of gnats? What the hell is a fog of gnats? Good old blocker. I'm gonna trust you on that one. Okay, black, black, one, one. Uh, with insects. It's sorry. Summon insects. Flying. Pay black. Regenerate fog of gnats. This is a very underwhelming card, in my opinion. You pay, you're spending two mana on a 1-1 one, one that you can regenerate for a black. But, okay. You super chatted, anyhow. Is this cheating? Sisterhood of Karn. Says, uh, awesome Swifter. We'll see you in a second. Sisterhood... Uh, yes, it is cheating. Not a 1 1 creature. 0 0. Don't worry, we'll have a 1 1 show one day. But it's not today. Probably should have started off at 0 0. But Killer Kirby wanted to start off at 1 1. Okay, so I think I saw Arcanus saying, I didn't get a card, I didn't get it. Gigant. Gigantomancer. This is an 8 mana 1 1. Human Shaman. And for one mana, target creature you control becomes a 7-7 seven, seven until end of turn. Probably itself. Probably itself. Nikachu, since when did you pronounce Nat without the G? I don't know. This was is this supposed to be pronounced uh Ganat? I don't think so. I don't remember what I said. I say a lot of things. But that absolves me of uh, anything stupid I say. King Ginger! Elrond, god of the cosmos. I don't know why you put the question marks. You super chatted. It's not like there's any, there's no better way to get my attention than a super chat. All right, we got a blue, blue, three generic, one, one god. Uh, guess plus one, plus one for each card in your hand and each foretold card you own in exile. Ooh. At the beginning of your end step, choose a card type. Reveal the top two cards of your library. Put all cards of the chosen type into your hand. The rest on the bottom of your library in, in any order. I choose creature. So what's on the back side? We got Haka, Whispering Raven, a blue one generic 2-3 flyer. And when it deals combat damage to a player, return it to its owner's hand and you scry two. That side sucks. Front side is a lot better though. Front is better than the back. Okay, we got Rorschach. Uh, thank you very much for your super chat. Any one one with Infect, especially Ink Moth Nexus. I think we did all of them. We did Glistener Elf, Plague, uh, what is the plague spitter or something like that? Um, the unblockable one. We did ink moth. Yeah, I don't think we've. I think we did all of them, or any of the all the notable ones. Anyhow, Arc Mound Ravagers zero zero. I know that for sure. Love the pronunciation of Haka. Haka. Okay. Martin's like, if we're talking about 1-1 one, one creatures, maybe Tim should be included. We did. We did Tim. Are we run out of creatures already? We got Quill here with Triumphant Adventurer. Triumphant. I looked er before the show started. There's like 6,000 1-1 one, one creatures out there. Okay, we got a black, white, 1-1 one, one human knight with that touch. And as long as it's your turn, Triumphant Adventurer has first strike. And whenever Triumphant Adventurer attacks, you venture into the dungeon. You're going on an adventure. Because you're so adventurous around here. All right, next up we've got Brendan Grieve with Chromium, the mutable. Must read full card. Chromium, the mutable. Okay, let's uh, uh, first off, we're going to do this. And then we'll read it again. Okay, flash. Uh, spell can't be countered. Flying. Discard a card. Until end of turn, Chromium, the mutable, becomes a human with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Loses all abilities and gains hexproof. It can't be blocked this turn. Go on, we're not done. I'm not done yet, I know. We still have super chats to get through. Still disqualified! Get it out of here! Board it! To the yeah, to the Yurank! <laughs> the abilities do not change what the card is. Naturally. Okay, Summer Mermaid Star. Thank you very much for your super chat. Grist Hunger Tide. Read the first ability. I know what I know what Grist is. You people are trying to cheat hard. 
Okay, long as Gris, the Hunger Tide, isn't on the battlefield. So it's on Scryfall. Uh, it's a 1-1 one -one insect creature in addition to its other types. Okay, whatever. You know, by some weird technicality, I might I might let that one through. That one, that one, that one might go through. The Chromium not. Chromium is so disqualified that it almost ended the stream. Yeah, <laughs> it almost ended the stream. <laughs> I saved the stream from Chromium. I saved the stream. Okay, we got Ben Sarm with uh, Ixalan's Lore Keeper. Thank you very much. Did I not spell this right? Ixalan's Lore Keeper. Is there such thing as a Lore Keeper? What is a Lore Keeper? Oh, it's Ixilis. You know, I would have made that same mistake myself. Okay, we got Ix uh, Ixali's Lore Keeper. It's a green 1-1 one, one human druid. Tap, add one man of any color. Spend this man only to cast a dinosaur or activate an ability of a dinosaur source. That seems terrible. Like, this is just a strictly worse mana dork. It only adds mana for dinosaurs. This is like a very narrow mana dork. I'm like, well, this is a legal 1-1. One, one. This is not the most dangerous of dangerous creatures, in my opinion. I'm like, what can this do that a Land War Elf can't? In my opinion. Anyway, okay, moving on. Uh, Zy Curran, last one with the Skullbriar. Skullbriar is a 1 1 for a green and a black. It's a zombie elemental with haste. Uh, when Skull whenever Skullbriar, the walking grave, deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Counters remaining on Skullbriar as it moves to any zone other than a player's hand or a library. What? Oh, so it keeps the counters in the graveyard or exile, but not imagine it kept the counters in your hand. That would be so bizarre. Trying to keep the card in your hand with like this dice at the same time. You gotta remember that dice has four. If you proliferate, can you proliferate in exile? Like, does that work? That's just weird. All right, next up, let's we go to Awesome Swifter again. Uh, with okay, fair enough. On my last card, so memory warm, memory warm. Oops, I didn't spell that one. Oh yeah, this is a memory warm. Is it a worm? It's a red, one generic, disgusting looking slug. Oh, it's an alien worm. Uh, it is a 1-1 one, one with paradox. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, memory worm deals two damage to target player. Oh, that's pretty good. And then that player discards a card, then draws a card. Why are we letting them loot? And then put a plus one, plus one counter on memory worm. Why are we letting them loot? That's, uh, that seems uh, crazy. That's crazy talk. You people are this. You're gonna keep the show going on for like another two hours with these super chats. We got Rorschach. Rorschach is in the house. Sorry, I'm late to the show. Hell's caretaker. Hopefully that hasn't been called. It. Sad creature return. Yeah, we did that one already. Active only during your upkeep. What a weird card. All right, but don't worry. Thanks to you, some. Some uh, innocent soul in the freebie section will get their card. Like, real different. Can we look at the Ruin Rat? Otherwise, Ruin Rat would never see the light of day. It's a black one generic 1-1 one, one with death touch. But when it dies, exile target card from the opponent's graveyard. It's going down with one of your cards with flashback. Or something, rather. Or your reanimator target. It's going down with something. It's not going down for nothing. Arayo! We did Arayo! I love that card. Yeah, we did Arayo. Sorry about that, King Ginger. But you know what that means. Someone else gets their card. Uh, who else do we have here? Ooh, I like that one, uh, Richard. Bomac Courier. Don't do me dirty by not saying my happy little skittering f friend. My happy little skittering friend. All right, it's a one mana one one with haste. It's a, it costs one generic mana, so you can go in any deck, but ideally with some red mana. When it attacks, exile the top card of your library face down. Pay a red, discard your hand. Sacrifice Bomac Courier to put all cards exiled with Bomac Courier into their owner's hands. 
I have been in many situations where my opponent just refilled their hand of like seven cards with their damn Bomac Courier. It's absolutely wild. Stetson! Uh, with, has my boy Risen Reef been said? You believe it or not, it has not. Okay, this card, this card looks stupid. Actually, it's broken. It's three mana, one, one. Whenever Risen Reef, including itself, like the thing is it triggers off of itself. Whenever Risen Reef or another elemental enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, put into uh, put into play tapped. If not, you just, uh, if you didn't put the card onto the battlefield, you put it in your hand. So either you're ramping or your card drawing. Like either way, you can't lose. Absolutely disgusting card. So it's like, and it's also like, yeah, three mana, draw a card, and just more gravy after that. Pacers fan forever. Uh, how about Baleful Strix? We did definitely did Baleful Strix. That, in fact, was the very first card of the show. I suggested it. Uh, you ramping or you're ranking, exactly. Okay, let's see. Did we do Bass? We did do Bass. Did we do Animar? We did not! Okay, we got Teamer Colors for a 1 1 Elemental with protection from white and black. The two colors that it is not. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Animar, Soul of Elements. Creature spells you cast with, uh, cost, sorry, creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each counter on, uh, sorry, for each plus one plus one counter on Animar. This card's insane. Very easily, you can uh, get a lot of. Uh, I meant we did best last stream. No, I'm pretty sure we did best this stream as well, right? Or maybe not. Did we not do best this stream? Maybe we didn't do best this stream. Okay, white, green, one generic, one, one human citizen. Whenever one or more creatures with a base power and toughness one, one enter the battlefield under your control, you this thing gets bigger. It gets a plus one, plus one. And then when Bess attacks, all the one ones get plus X, plus X equal to the plus one, plus one counters on Bess. All right. So actually, we didn't do that one. I, uh, I gave Animar for free for absolutely nothing. All right. We got King Ginger with uh, Philip the Lost. Okay, how do I spell this thing? F-B-L-T-H-P. Broken in the right decks. I've never seen this card broken. I can see the potential though. It's a blue uh, one, one, one. Homunculus. And if it entered the battlefield, draw a card. But if it entered the battlefield from your library, uh, or was cast from your library, draw two cards instead. That is value. You got two for zero Tuesdays. When it becomes the target of a spell, you shuffle Philip the into its owner's library to be once again put into play for two more cards. Pacers fan forever with the uh, dis uh, Disciple of the Vault. This is the one you sack all the artifacts to, right? Yeah, you. Uh, it's a 1-1, one, one. it's a human cleric. Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose one life. The idea is to get your opponent like a little bit low Play the play the disciple of the vault and then sack all your artifacts and kill them in one absolute felt like one shot. One shot, one kill. <laughs> it's a platonic liquid with humility. Yeah, this is uh disqualified. I understand I, I like the uh like the flavor. So this is like this is just platonic liquid's new way flavorful way to donate to everybody else jury master of revenue i was i was reading revenue okay we got uh jury master of review sorry ju got uh jury yeah it's review master of revenue okay we got a black red one one is looking to make some profit around here Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on Jury Master of Revenue. And whenever Jury dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. You better believe it, it goes bankrupt. The only thing that's going to come out, cut him out of his, if its pocket is nothing. Sorry, this card is good. <laughs> what a show. We're going to make a killing tonight. Uh, 
Okay, next up we got Jitsuko with the Allosaurus Shepherd. We did that one already, but thank you very much for the super chat. We will donate it to... I saw a pretty good one here. Where was it? Mirror Entity from William. Uh, if you have a lot of mana, this card is pretty busted. It's a white 2 generic 1-1 one, one shapeshifter. Pay X until end of turn creatures you control have base power and toughness XX and gain all creature types. They are everything, and they get big really fast. Next up, we have Pacers Fan Forever. Ice Fang Quaddle. We, we actually have not done this one. Almost all the super chats have been sniped in some way or another. Uh, but we actually have not done the Ice Fang. All right, we got the blue-green Baleful Strix. Except it's not an artifact, but it has Flash. So it's actually strictly better Baleful Strix. Oh, no, not entirely. Because it does have Flying, enters the battlefield, does draw a card. But only has Death Touch as long as you control at least three other Snow Permanents. You don't got three other Snow Permanents? You don't have Death Touch! It's actually safe to pet. You can. You, it's safe to pet. So if there's too, too much snow around, you're screwed. Zykran, okay, I lied. Scoot, scoot mob. Unfortunately, we've also done scoot mob. Oh no, no, we just do. Do we do scoot swarm? Scoot mob. Maybe we did not do. Oh, we did not do the scoot mob. Okay, we have a green one one insect at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control five or more lands, put four plus one plus one counters on your scoot mob. So next turn you can have another four counters and another four counters and another four counters. We got Radio Piers. Asper Sentinel is pretty dangerous. You better believe it is. But we did the super chat already. Or sorry, we did. We have. We've gone through this card already. So who's gonna get the super chats? Who out here? We did Predator Ooze. I don't know what this is, so probably we didn't do this one. Itch, new, Mondruid. The hell is this? Green, green, one generic for a one, one. Does four damage to any opponent casting an instant. This does not apply, what the hell? Okay, that's the ancient, the ancient scripture says this. Whenever an opponent casts an instant spell other than the first instant spell that player casts each turn. The f he what is that supposed to mean? Other than the first instant spell that player casts each turn. It's not like I'm obligated to cast an instant spell each turn. Ichnamon deals four damage to that player. So it sounds like it's an anti-storm card. Seems okay. Looks like a reserve list card, but not on the reserve list. Okie dokie. I don't know how this card works. That's a lot of nudity for 1994. Oh, God, this is a little bit covered up over there. The druid knows how to hang a towel over its groin. Okay, often swifter. It's format limited, but hear me out with the Susan Foreman. Susan Foreman. Okay, it's a green one, generic one, one. It's a Time Lord. If you would planeswalk, instead, look at the top two cards of your planar deck, put one of them on the bottom of your planar deck and the other on top, then planeswalk again. You can also add a green. I'm not done yet. Damn it. Show's going a lot longer than I I didn't realize that there's so many one ones you guys are so passionate about. Okay, um I don't know anything about how this card <laughs> I don't have no idea how good or bad this card is when it planeswalks, so I'm just gonna trust that it's fine. Okay, we got Ben Sarm. Uh, what do you got? Blazing Ruwala. Actually, we have not done Blazing Ruwala. We have not done this one. It is a uh, red 1-1 one, one creature with madness of zero. So if you're discarding a card, just put it into play. It's free. And you can pay a red and it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. But you know what? You just have to do it once. And it turns into a 3-1 creature. Pretty damn good. What the hell is a planar deck? You and me are in the exact same boat, Arcanus. You and me both. King Ginger, Urtai Wizard, Adept. I'm a little surprised we haven't gotten to this card either. All right, the original continuous counter spell on a stick. So three mana, one, one. It counts as a wizard. Because back then, like legends just had the creature type legend. Okay, for four mana, you can tap it to counter target spell. Sorry, opponent, you want to play something? Well, 
Sorry about that. You don't get to play anything, so long as my Urtai's around. Zykarin again with uh, Dwarven Berserker. See, and you almost missed. I almost did miss the bomb. I, I, I'll give you that. I almost missed the bomb. Dwarven Berserker. You got me. You got me. Okay, we have a red one, generic one, one dwarf. If the Berserker is blocked, it gets plus three, plus zero, and gains trample until end of turn. This is terrible. This is just... I mean, it's a legal card, but like, it's not a very dangerous card. Gains trample. Like, do you know what? I'm just not going to block it. Just, you can you can peck me for one damage. That's what I'm going to do. Brash Taunter. Oh, actually, that's an all-star, isn't it? It's quite... Uh, this is a quite a good card. How did we get through this show and no one mentioned the jank Brash Taunter? The red four generic 1-1. One, one. That is indestructible. And if it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. So be careful when you where you place your fists. So and then for a red two generic, Brash Taunter fights another target creature. Because it's looking for a fight. You hit like a kobold. You want to fight? Those are fighting words around here. We have awesome Swifter for one more time. Planar deck is for the Commander format Plane Chase. It's a normal game of magic with a community deck of different planes that affect everyone. Neat format. Who gets the last who? That Super Chan had no card, which means it goes to one of all of you. We have done Toski. But what have we not done? Skydiver is... Merfolk Skydiver? Oh yeah, this is a 1-1. Blue, green, merfolk mutant, flying, and as a battlefield, put a counter on target creature you control, which could be the merfolk skydiver, so you have automatically a 2-2 two, two for two mana, and you proliferate. You got infinite mana, you can, actually, if you have infinite mana of all colors, you can actually just kill in one, in one shot with this card. And then that would be it. And with that, find the Wii Sport. I wonder how many people leave when they hear the Wii Sports sound, but they don't even realize, like, the show is still going. And they would never know because they left. All right, if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here weekdays at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. For everyone here in the evening, we will do these at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, weekdays up until January 5th. And most importantly, thank you very much to everyone who su supports the channel. If you are a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to contribute and help the coffee crew, or even if you donate. And of course, no one... No one can save the show without the uh, wonderful... What are you guys donating more Super Chats here? We got Pacers Fan Has Goblin Welder and Mirror Retriever been done? We didn't do Mirror Retriever. You be careful. You Super Chat at this point of the, the show. It's, da it's danger! <laughs> you may not get your Super Chat back. Uh, Mirror Retriever is a 2 mana. 1-1, one, one, and when it dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. I can vouch that this is a 1-1, one, one, and it is good. Now, most importantly, this show is nothing without all you guys. The coffee crew, or the hot cocoa crew in the evening. So thank you so much to Darkest Angel, David Sampson. Amazing crack monkey. Summer, we've got Erland, Killer Kirby, Angela, Avatar, Steve Cooper, Erland, Abzo, Paul Rod, King Ginger, Arcanus. Someone to foresee. We got Tien, uh, Teletna. Teletna, the big squig. Die. <laughs> D's EXE. What else do we have here? We have so many people. Richard Smith, Zykurin, Gillum. Because you guys are the show. So as usual, my hot cocoa crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.